Hey, how's it going? So today I've got a quick instructional video for you. What we're gonna be taking a look at is Permobile specific programming and specifically the ICS or seating buttons. The actuators on these chairs can sometimes get out of calibration. That'll happen if you replace an actuator or if one of them is moved when the chair is off. Or for example, if you sleep in your chair, sometimes they'll drift a little bit while the chair is powered off. Now, the auto calibration is something that should not be performed under most circumstances, but I got a lot of questions from people asking about how to do this, and I figured making a video about it would probably be the easiest way. Now, this uses what's called ICS boot up programming, and all the numbers on your ICS seating buttons have a number assigned to them. Basically, the way this works, you hold down a combination of buttons while you power on the chair, and that allows you to access different programming functions within the Permobile ICS seating system. Now, this is not a warning for the sake of a warning. You have to be very careful when you're doing this. There is no reset, there is no master undo everything. If you manage to change a setting that's not what you wanted, you have to figure out which setting that was and change it back. Now, a few people are gonna be like, hey, get to the point, shut up, quit talking. Here's the deal. You do not wanna to skip to the steps on this. This video was intentionally filmed to explain everything. There's a lot you need to know about this. There are time codes down below, so if you have done this process before and you can't remember what the button codes are, something like that, you can look down below and find those. But I highly encourage you to watch this entire video. Clips of this are unedited and seem like they're longer than they need to be. But once again, you need to get a feel for this process before you try it on your chair. That being said, we've got a couple of chairs over here we're gonna try this with. We have my 2021 F3. That one has all four power functions. And then we have a 2017, 2018-ish M3. This one has three power functions. It has tilt, recline, and elevation, but not power legs. Now I am gonna be writing up a guide on the website, including some pictures with a little cheat sheet and things you can print out to do this. I recommend anytime you're doing ICS boot up programming, maybe not this specifically, but any of the other functions which we're not gonna get into today, I recommend using your phone and having someone film you as you do it so you can see exactly which buttons you're pressing just in case you get to the wrong setting. Now the way the seating actuator system works on a permobile Seems like a bit of black magic, but it actually simplifies things quite a bit. I'm gonna link the video up above and down below to shop class episode one, and that will explain kind of why things are the way they are. Basically, these actuators, whether they are smart or not, have positional awareness baked in. So there's a little controller board inside here and some Hall effect sensors, a set of gears, and some spinning magnets. What that does is it allows the logic board that's in here to store the position of where this actuator is in space. That enables things like memory positioning and also you don't need limit switches. On a lot of RNET powered chairs, they'll have a limit switch at the end of travel on the top and bottom of whichever actuator it is, or they will simply crash the actuator, which means it'll go to full extension so it can't move anymore, which jams up the gears and that causes a subsequent amperage spike and the controller can detect that. But with limit switches or the actuator crashing or current sensing method, there isn't really a way to do memory positions. And also this setup allows for an easier way for setting up the inhibits, where if your chair is in a dangerous position, like tilted too far back or elevated too far up, it'll slow the chair down a little bit. So that allows the seating system to know exactly where all the actuators are in space. But if I take the leg actuator out of this chair and put this one in, there's no way it's gonna be in exactly the same position. So that would be a scenario that we need to run the auto calibration. So there is good reason that these things have all of that extra functionality and extra circuitry in here. And it may lead some people to believe that it makes the chair harder to diagnose or repair. But in all actuality, it's saving a lot of wiring and a lot of other potential problems that could arise. Well, assuming you want the functionality, Permobile chairs have a lot more features and functionality than standard RNET chairs do. So the choice is yours as to whether you get a Permobile or something else. Once you get used to the seating system on one of these chairs, it's really hard to go back to anything else. And again, this auto calibration is not something that should ever need to be done under normal circumstances. This chair right now, I'm having kind of a strange problem where when the seat lift is up all the way and I use a memory position to bring it back down, the chair tilts further forward than I feel like it should. 
And I've done a lot of mods with this chair. I've unhooked a lot of electronics. I've changed the wiring. I've added this power box. And anytime you disconnect the batteries or change things or change actuators or do different programming, it is possible for the ICS to lose its calibration. A few things here. Before you start auto calibration, you have to make sure nobody is sitting in the chair. That is very important. Also, you need to make sure that there are no backpacks or things hanging off the back of the chair. Or in the case of this chair, I actually have to remove part of the backrest because this headrest mount right here will interfere if I tilt too far back. This auto calibration is going to run most of the actuators to their full extension. It doesn't always run all of them fully, but there is a chance that it's going to run them in a way that will cause this to crash. I'll just show you that real quick. If I recline back, you can see that this gap right here, if you watch this, gets smaller and smaller. And those two parts will actually collide with each other long before the seat is completely flat. Okay, now there you go. You can see if we go any further, these are going to collide. And if you notice the position of the chair, we are not really close to flat at all. If your chair has a stock backrest on it, you shouldn't really have to worry about that, but just things to keep in mind. Now on my chair, there's a couple ways of dealing with this. I could remove this bracket from the rails, and I was actually gonna do that, but I just noticed the way it's attached, there's some bolts sticking through here on each side. So because I'm using the direct backrest seating adapter, I can actually remove the entire back from this chair without using any tools. If you have a stock backrest, this is not gonna be an issue. But for me, all I have to do is flip this little lever right here. Then I can pull the entire seat back and bracket adapter up off the chair. And now we won't have to worry about this thing colliding. As you'll see in a minute when we run the calibration on this chair, it's not gonna be an issue because it has a stock backrest. This chair has the seating toggles. These are gonna operate exactly the same as a chair that has the buttons. These are just easier to press for some people, but the button layout with each number associated with each button is gonna be exactly the same. Now you can push these toggles or you can push down here either way. But when we look at this little cheat sheet here, you can see each button has a label and it starts here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Looking at this other chair here that doesn't have toggles, it's a little bit plainer to see. But basically just remember, even if you have the toggles, the button assignments are exactly the same. It just may be a little bit more confusing in your head to remember which buttons to press. Make sure also that the chair is in a position so that the leg rest can go out all the way and the chair can run completely flat without running into a wall or anything like that. If for some reason the chair is about to hit something and it's in the middle of the calibration process, you can just reach over and turn off the chair. It won't damage anything. You'll get a bunch of errors on the screen, but you can ignore those. You'll want to move it into a position to where it can fully extend everything and then start the process again. So we're going to start here by turning the chair off and we need to press buttons three, five, and six as we turn the chair on. So that's going to be this one, this one, and this one. So because I'm using the toggles, I can just do that with my fingers like this. But what I'm gonna do is press and hold those buttons. I'm gonna turn on the chair. And then when all these lights here turn green, I'll let go of the buttons, step back, and let it go through its process. Uh, can I reach this? There we go. Wait for all these to turn green. There we go. Now let go. You'll see we've got a little dancing uh, red light right there. Then to start the process, we want to hit button four, which is going to be right here. Now the chair is going to run a bunch of its actuators. It may not run all of them to full extension. It depends on what it decides needs to happen. You can see there the leg rests are going. You're going to see some errors on the screen during this process. Completely ignore those. But we're going to let the whole thing run for maybe two or three minutes, something like that, until we hear an excruciatingly loud beep coming out of the joystick. It may seem like it's not doing anything, but just wait and it will eventually do that. So you can see there it's running the legs up. Okay, that may happen too, since gravity makes that work. Now the seat lift is running up and down just a tiny bit. Now here goes the backrest. And you'll see different lights blinking on here during the process. You can kind of ignore all of those. And here's the reason we removed that backrest because it would have collided by now.
So it's running all the actuators to full extension and storing that so it knows where they are in space. Now I'm gonna swing the joystick out a tiny bit because I know that will interfere with the side guard when that goes all the way forward. Actually, I'm gonna lift that up a tiny bit just so we don't collide. Okay, that's now all the way forward. Now we're getting some tilt and elevate. It's checking anterior tilt. Then we've got several actuators running at once. And I think it should be done. Give it just a minute here. Oh, that's so loud. So once you get that beep, the thing is done. And in this case, we did not get any errors on the screen, so we don't have to worry about that. Now we want to turn the chair off. We'll give it maybe 10 seconds or so. And then turn it back on. Then it may do some reprogramming here. We'll get the master error on the screen. And then we'll power cycle it again once it starts doing this candy cane dance thing. And then turn it back on. And there we go. We should be back to normal. So I've got a seat memory position saved. Let's go ahead and activate that. and we should be done. Now, quick side note, if you do have any memory positions saved after you run a calibration, they may be slightly different than they were previously, so you wanna check that. And there we go, auto calibration is complete. Now, I can put my backrest back on here. And there we go, it's reattached. Let's go ahead and run the same process again here on our 2018 M3, I think it's a 2018. So we will start with it turned off. And then we're going to press buttons three, five, and six while we turn it on. So three, five, six. And I'm going to use my pinky on my other hand here to turn this on because I don't have hands to do this. Wait till these turn green. Let go. We'll get the little flickering. Then press button four to initiate the process. Now this chair doesn't have power legs, so the process may be a little bit shorter. Testing anterior tilt. And we're already getting some errors on the screen, but once again, we can ignore those. It's doing the recline now. And once again, this process may not be the same, even if you run it on the same chair at different times. It kind of has to do with where the chair starts and where it thinks the calibration is. It'll usually always, though, run the recline back all the way. I found that's something that typically always happens. And again, if anything happens during this process where the chair is gonna collide with another part of itself or hit a wall or something, just reach over and hit the power button. It won't damage anything. And it'll pause like this occasionally. Looks like it's very slowly actuating the tilt. We're just gonna, oh, there we go. <laughs> I was gonna say, just keep waiting. It will happen eventually. Now we're kind of in a weird position here, but let's turn it off. And it's important to turn this off before you make any seating position adjustments. So we'll turn it off, give it a few seconds, turn it back on. 
then this starts doing its little candy cane dance. We get another error on the screen. We will turn it back off. And then turn it back on. There we go. Looks like everything's back to normal. So we can go ahead and use our buttons here to get this back into a position that's not uh, insane. And there we go. Auto calibration is now complete on this chair as well. There we go. We've completed the auto calibration process on two different chairs with a couple different ear ranges. On the newer power platform chairs, I have not had a chance to play around with those yet. I do not know if the process is the same on those or not until I'm able to get my hands on one of those chairs and actually test it. Now again, I know there's a lot of people out there that like to try stuff and try to learn and that's completely fine. But this is one of those things where you don't want to do this for no reason at all. This is something that is part of a diagnostic or if you're having other errors or other problems going on. And a lot of times I'm just going to be linking people to this video. So I would encourage you to not do this on your chair just to see how it works. It won't necessarily damage anything, but like I said, there's a lot of potential if you have a backrest or other things like that for the chair to collide with itself or hit a wall or other things like that. So anyways, there you go. Hopefully that explains the process. And now you can move on to the rest of the troubleshooting process. Hopefully that fixed the problem, whatever it was, and you can go from there. Thanks for watching.